morning everyone and here we are again in our palm desert airbnb kitchen a very small kitchen our time here is winding down but in honor of easter i wanted to share with you one of my favorite dishes i learned how to make when i was on lockdown last year in on the island of cyprus we were on cyprus we were intended to be on Cyprus for two weeks. We ended up spending two months there. But one of my favorite things I learned to make in Cyprus is called, I'm going to read it to make sure I get it correctly, Copepia mi ample fila. Ample fila. I'm not sure I got that right. But we just call it Copepia. And if you've had Greek domatis, it's almost the same. It is grape leaves stuffed with meat and rice. A domatis, a Greek version, usually is cooked in lemon juice and water, but in Cyprus, they add tomato juice, and it really is delicious. So today, I'm gonna to share with you how to make kopepia from the island of Cyprus. So the first thing we're gonna do, in my cast iron skillet, I have a little bit more than one tablespoon of olive oil heating up. And I have a large onion that I already chopped and we need to get that cooked for our very first thing. Now, when we were in Cyprus, the only thing we got to do before we went into total lockdown was we took a cooking class and I'm so glad we squeezed that in. That's where I learned to make kopekia. Um, we also learned to make a whole lot of other things. The Cypriot food is very similar to Greece, but they have a kind of a different take on it. And we spent two Easter's in Cyprus. What do I mean? Because the Catholic Church and most of Christian, uh, the Christian world celebrate Easter on one day, but the Orthodox Church celebrates Easter on another day. And we were there for both of those. So the um, Gregorian calendar, which is what the Catholic Church uses, celebrates Easter on the first Sunday after the full moon, after the equinox. So in um, 2021, the equinox is March 20th, the full moon is March 28th, so Easter falls on April 4th. The Orthodox Church, which includes countries like, um, several countries in Africa, um, uh, Cyprus, Greece, uh, Bulgaria, Russia, um, I'm not naming them all, but those are the ones that come to mind. They follow the Julian calendar. And they, because of that, Easter always falls, usually around two weeks, but sometimes as much as almost four weeks after the, uh, <laughs> the Gregorian calendar Easter. And the Orthodox Church always celebrates Easter after Passover, the Jewish holiday of Passover. Um, so this year, the Orthodox Easter is May 2nd. So I know it's a little confusing and you don't have to understand it all, but that was something I learned when I was in Cyprus, so that was kind of fascinating. While we were in Cyprus, um, on our Easter that we would celebrate here in the United States, we had lamb chops. And on the Orthodox Easter, I made a dish called kleftiko, which is the national dish of Cyprus. And it's a lamb shank that you cook for hours usually in an open air oven that a lot of people have in their backyards in Cyprus. We just did it in our regular oven with a lot of vegetables wrapped in um, foil. And that is a really delicious dish. They use a lot of lamb in Cyprus. And in fact, this dish, Kopepia, you could use lamb, you could use ground veal. Um, today we are using ground pork. So um, in Cyprus, they call Easter Pasha, and sometimes it's referred to as Lambri, and it means the bright one or the bright light. And of course, it's the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, no matter which church you're celebrating it from. 
or which calendar you're celebrating it from. So we have uh, one whole yellow onion here in our cast iron skillet. And the next thing I'm going to add is my ground. Um, I'm using pork. Like I said, we could use lamb, which I actually have made it with lamb before. I've never made it with ground veal, but of course you could use ground veal. You could even use ground beef. So we're going to get this going, and I'll be back in a second to show you a little bit more. So our ground pork is almost cooked, and I wanted to mention that sometimes you'll see recipes where you stuff the grape leaves with raw um, meat. Um, there's recipes both ways. So this recipe that I am using actually has you cook the meat ahead of time. So we have one whole onion and we have, let's see, how much was it? One pound of ground pork in here. By the way, this recipe should make mm, 15, maybe 20 copepia and um, you can easily double it because these are great for appetizers. So the next thing we're going to add is uncooked rice. I have a fourth of a cup of uncooked rice. That's just going straight into the cooked meat. And now I have four ounces of chopped tomatoes. I'm using canned tomatoes. You could easily use a fresh tomato or about one chopped tomato. Now this is an ingredient that you wouldn't find in the Greek version of this dish. The juice of half a lemon. Use fresh lemon juice. And in fact, we are very blessed here in Palm Desert to have access to a lot of citrus. A half of a cup of chopped parsley and about a third of a cup of chopped mint leaves. Give it some. Now I'm gonna let this cook for a few minutes. I wanna quickly show you our grape leaves here. You can use um, fresh grape leaves. I've done that before. We used to go grow grapes at our last house. And especially in the spring when they're nice and tender, it was really fun to go out and cook the grape, go out and pick the grape leaves and then just blanch them maybe uh, in a little bit of salt water. But these are jarred grape leaves. You can find these in just about any supermarket. And they're certainly easier than trying to do your own. So that's what we're using to create our copepia. And I've got them in the sink. They're just gonna drain there for a little bit. I rinsed them off to try to get some of the brine off of them. So our filling is pretty much done. I'm gonna let it cook here for another minute and then it needs to cool completely before we start the next process. So Arnie and I are gonna go play golf and later on today I'll come back and show you how we wrap the copepia. Welcome back. So we played nine holes of golf. Don't ask what our score was. And our um, ground pork, rice, some veg, some spices is ready to go. And I'm, I've rolled up a couple so I can kind of show you what they're supposed to look like. They're not all gonna be exactly the same size because the grape leaves are not all the same size. But basically you want them to be about the size of your little finger and a, about the size of a cigar. Oh, this one's a little bigger than a cigar. Um, and I wanna show you that the pot that I'm putting them in, I actually put a couple of chopsticks in the bottom of it and layered a few grape leaves on top of that because you don't want them sitting right on the bottom of the pan, they can burn. Um, but you could, you wouldn't, if you don't have the chopsticks, that's okay. You could just put a couple of grape leaves in there. So I'm gonna show you how to do a couple of these and, um, and then I'll get them all done and come back and we'll finish it up. So I'm just using my hands, taking about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. This is pretty big uh, grape leaf I've got right here. The other thing I need to tell you, okay, before I do, so I'm gonna roll this over. You're making it like an envelope, taking the sides in and just keeping it pretty tight the meat and especially the uncooked rice 
is going to expand during cooking. So you don't want to make it super tight, but you also don't want it to fall together when it's in the pan. We'll set it with the um, seam side down there. So your grape leaves have a rough side and a soft side. The rough side, you can see the veins. You want that up. Take a little more pork. And what I started to say earlier is you will find recipes where you don't cook the pork ahead. You're actually placing uncooked meat right onto the grape leaves. I've done it that way. I actually kind of like it that way. But this recipe I'm using today from Cyprus has us making cooking the pork ahead. So this one actually turned out pretty good. So now I'm gonna do the rest of these and I'll come back and show you what we do next. So I'll be right back. Okay, I have actually more than I was expecting, about 23 copepia. And they're not exactly the same size, but it's really important that you put them into the pan seam side down. And the other important thing before you choose uh, before you start putting them in the pan, make sure you're using a pan that you have a plate that will fit down inside because this is how we're going to keep them from floating all over the place. I'm going to weight this plate down. So I've got about 23. Um, some of them inevitably, every time I do this dish, some of them will fall apart in the cooking process. Don't worry, it just happens. So. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to put just a few grape leaves that I didn't, I, I had some left over. I'm going to place them on top just to secure it down a little bit more. You really don't want them moving around in there while they're cooking. Also, I mentioned earlier about using um, raw meat. If you were using raw meat, this would cook about... Um, 60 to 70 minutes, but when you're using the cooked meat, it's only about 30 to 35 minutes. Okay, so now I have placed that on there and I am going to add juice of one whole lemon, one cup of tomato juice, just regular tomato juice. If you're in the United States and you wanna use V8 or even Clamato, I saw that in some recipes, but I'm just using what we used when I was in Cyprus. I'm also going to add the rest of the can of peeled tomatoes that I used earlier in the recipe. Why not? And then, because I really want the um, copepia to be completely covered in liquid, and it's not quite, I am adding about a cup of water. Yep, that's perfect. Now, I'm taking my plate. I'm putting it on top of everything. And I'm gonna weigh it down with this bowl. And that's how it's gonna cook. It's gonna cook on a medium-low heat for about 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna come back and show you what it looks like. I'll be right back. Our copepia is done, and almost all of them came out of the pan in one piece. Um, they smell really great and remind me so much of our time in Cyprus, which, <clears throat> by the way, we were on the house arrest pretty much the entire time we were on Cyprus. So we really want to go back. It's an absolutely beautiful country with a pretty incredible history, and I don't think a lot of people know that much about it. So I highly recommend when this is all over and we can travel again to consider going to Cyprus. Copepia, a special Cypriot treat we are enjoying for Easter. I hope you give this recipe a try. It really wasn't very hard. Oh, and by the way, it was about 40 minutes in the uh, low boil, and I, I tested it to make sure the rice had cooked through, 
and let it go a little bit longer uh, because the rice wasn't quite done. Copepia from Cyprus for Tasty Tuesday. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week.